In lesson 13, we're going to look at building a volume formula for a pyramid. So on page 297, go ahead and look at these two diagrams and then draw and label a prism or a cylinder that has the same base, okay, congruent to this base, and it has this solid's height, okay? So the equal congruent base and same height of a prism or a solid. Sketch that in your book, then come back to the video. So it didn't say whether it needed to be oblique or right. So you could have gotten a few different um, kind of options here, but something like this. And then just make sure that you've labeled. So you'd have 20 centimeters by 32 centimeters. And then this height here would be 25 centimeters. Um, same thing here, you'd have 20 by 32 for the base. And then the height here would be the same as the side since this one's a right prism. For the cylinder, you would want to make sure that you labeled the radius as seven feet and then the height as 10 feet. So in an oblique, that would be outside of the shape. So that would be the 10 feet there. Um, in this one, that's a right cylinder. It would be the same as the side there. So 10 feet. So those are some options for prisms and cylinders that have the same base and height as the pyramid and the cone drawn. All right, then thinking about visualizing these solids. Now, this is um, an X, Y, Z kind of axis, a three-dimensional. Think about it as like the corner of a room. You've got the corner and then you've got the floor here. So you've got kind of a three-dimensional space. So suppose that we took a triangular pyramid, okay, and sliced it with a plane. Okay, so sliced it from this top corner here down to this bottom point. So we just did a plane right there through this point. So we that's how we created this first pyramid. Um, and then the remaining part of the prism, we would slice through BC. So BC is here. So we would do, be doing a prism that goes B, through BC and then up to D. So here's the other one to create another pyramid. So these are actually the pyramids that you created in lesson 12. So if you still have those in your possession, you can look at them and those are the pyramids that are created from this triangular prism. So when we're looking at this, um, you can take a look at the prisms that have a P1 and a P3 marked on them. So from your prisms from class, looking at those. And how do the areas of those bases compare in P1 and P3? So here's the base. I've um, marked those on the diagram on the screen. How do the base areas of those compare? So you should notice that they're the same. So we've got the same base area there. And let's see, okay, I had them grouped together. I was gonna say maybe I could move them and show you that they're the same. I suppose I could do this and then grab them and move it and you'll see that they're the same area. And then how do the heights of these prisms compare? So if you take a look um, and stand those next to each other, you'll see that those heights are identical. So the height of this one is four and the height of this one is also four. So how do, how would the volumes compare then if the area of their base and the, and the height are the same? So these would end up with the same area, or sorry, same volume, since the base area and height are equal. It would stand a reason that we would think that the that the volumes would be the same as well. Okay, then similarly, 
Um, if we take a look at pyramids P2, P2 um, and P3, okay, so if we take a look at period, um, look at their bases, okay, so remember, here's the point that it goes to, so here's the point that this one is going to, okay, here's the point that that one is going to. So if we take a look at those two bases, again, if you have the shapes in your hand, you can look at it that way. Um, otherwise, on the screen, what do you notice about these two bases um, and, and the, specifically their area? So if you could manipulate those and move those around, you would notice that those base areas are, again, the same. And if we took a look at the heights, okay, so again, how far is it from the base to that apex? Okay, you would notice here's the height line for each of them. So the height line is two in each case. So these heights are the same. So then what would it, so then it would stand to reason that again, um, those two volumes should be the same. So we would think that these volumes would equal So if we've now figured out that um, P2 and P3 have the same volume and also that P1 and P3 have the same volume, so this is the same size as this one, and then this one is the same size as this one, it would stand to reason that all three of these have the exact same volume. Um, so same volume for all three. And so how could we use this to figure out what we think the volume would be of the pyramid? So remember, this was, um, this started as a prism, okay? This started as a prism cut into some different pyramids. So if I just kind of draw this, uh, this prism on here so I can bring it to the other screen with me. So we've got this prism. Let's bring that to this other screen. So they started, um, they started as this prism. And now we know that we just cut it into three identical pyramids. So it would kind of make sense that one pyramid is going to equal the prism volume divided by three. Since all three of those fit in to make that, they're all three equal. So dividing the prism into three equal parts, the, um, the prism's volume into three equal parts. So do any of these arguments depend on the specific triangular prism that we used? So there was nothing that was really special about it. We just had a prism that we split into equal parts, okay, based on going from one side down to the next. Okay, so we took one side of this base down to here. Then we took the other base and went back up to the point. So nothing was specific about that. Um, and then this pyramid doesn't look like the ones in the lesson. Um, is it possible to create three pyramids with the same volume as this one? Okay, so it would seem like yes. Okay, um, if we just split it up in the same as uh, the previous example. So let's take a look at these three um, different pyramids and cones. So each solid um, is, each solid in the image has a height of six, okay? So the height in each of these is six, and the base is 10 square units. The cross section's been created in each to dilate it with a skill factor of 0.5. So we've dilated each of these bases 0.5 to get this, to get these three cross sections. So let's calculate the area of each of the cross sections. So remember when you're doing um, dilation of area, you take the original area and you multiply it by your K value squared. So times k squared, and that will give us our new area. So in this case, our original area is 10. So we'll do 10 
times k squared and k is 0.5. So we'll do 10 times 0.5 twice. And we'll end up with 2.5 for this one. So the area of this equals 2.5. And if we did it here, we're going to multiply 10 by 0.5 squared again. So we're going to get 2.5 for this one. And then again, 2.5 for this one. So each of those cross sections are going to be the same area. So suppose the new cross section was created in each solid, a new cross section was created all at the same height using just some skill factor. So we're not going to say it specifically. How would the areas of these three cross sections compare? So it would seem like they would be the same because no matter what this k value is, the original area is the same. So then if we multiply it by a k value twice, no matter what that k value is, we'll end up with the same answer because we have the original area being the same, the k in each case will be the same, so the new area would be the same. Does this information about cross sections tell you something about the volume? So it should, okay, it should confirm what we talked about, that the volume of each of these should be the same. If we just keep taking the area of all the cross sections up, okay, um, that Cavallari's principle tells us that these volumes should be the same since the cross sections are identical at each specific height. So maybe I'll type that. So since the cross section um, area is the same at every height. Um, Cavallari's, I don't remember how you spell, spell this, Cavallari's principle would suggest the volumes are the same. Right? I'm not sure about that spelling, so you'll probably want to look back at a previous section and see if that's spelled right. Um, so calculate the volume of each of these solids. So remember, we just looked at that it should be, um, we should be able to create a prism out of this with the same base and same height and then split it into three equal parts. Okay, so this should be one third of the initial volume. So we would be doing volume equals a prism volume divided by three. Or another way to write that is one third, the area of the base times the height. So the area of each of these bases is 10. And then the height of each one um, was, what, what did they tell us the height was? Six. So then 10 times 6 is 60, divided by 3 is 20 um, cubic units for each volume. All right, so how do we calculate um, the volume of a triangular prism? So by taking the area of the base times the height, so that's the volume formula. And then remember, area of the base, so it's a triangle, so you'd be doing one half um, the base times the height there for the triangle, and then timesing it by the height of the prism. Um, and so then how did we find the volume of the remaining solids? Well, I didn't. So because they were the exact, they would have been the exact same as the others uh, because this was identical. So this was 10 in each case, the, um, and then this was 6 in each case. So we didn't even need the area formula for the base. We already had it, and then we ended up knowing that they would have all been the same. And then we actually looked at the pyramids, and so that's where we got that one-third area of the base times the height. So if you had the triangular prisms, would have just been area of the base times the height, and then we divided by three. 
Um, so similarities and differences between prisms, cylinders, cones, and pyramids. I would say um, they need, they each have um, bases and heights. Okay, let me make this a little bit smaller. They each have um, bases and heights. And you need the area of the base and the height of the solid to calculate the volume. But pyramids um, only have one base. Pyramids and cones only have one base where prisms and cylinders have two. So for um, pyramids and cones, you take um, the area of the base times the height and divide by three when calculating the volume. Since the volume is smaller than its similar prism counterpart, So categorizing cones and cylinders, should they be characterized as types of pyramids and prisms or should they be their own category? So, I mean, that's kind of debatable. Um, so they are very similar. So they could be grouped together. So a cone with a pyramid and a cylinder um, as a prism. Only difference is the is that um, a circle isn't a polygon. So that's the only characteristic that's different. Pyramids have um, all straight sides for their bases and so do prisms. Cones and cylinders specifically have a circle base, but they act identical to each other. So you can fill this in on your reference chart. Volume is area of the base times the height divided by three or times one third for a pyramid and a cone. And then lesson summary. So in lesson 12, we talked about that we thought it was a third and today we confirmed that. Um, so when we take the area of the base multiply or and dilate it by uh, to find a scale factor or to find a cross section, we would just multiply the area of the base times that scale factor squared. Since the cross sections at all heights have equal area, they have the same volume. This means that one third the area of the base times the height gives us the volume of any pyramid or cone, not just the one that we specifically created in lesson 12.